Hi, and welcome to my wormery. So I've decided that for today I'm going to deal with the finishing bins. The finishing bins, their main goal is to house the finished compost that got put into those bins about three weeks ago. And maybe two weeks ago or a week and a half ago, I placed what I'm referring to as bait boxes into these containers. After removing the worms from those bait boxes, I want to reload them with a fresh batch of material so that we can kind of go into the final stage of trying to bait out the worms prior to using this material out in the garden, which which I'll probably try to do in the next uh, week or so. Because it is time to set up my garden. It's already past due. And I do want to make use of this material when that time comes. When the worms are removed, they're going to get placed down into this newest of my bins. And another thing I'm also going to do is this little container here was used to sort of shoot a little short time-lapse video of the lighting situation that I have in my time-lapse uh, filming area just to see if the light was too intense to scare the worms away from the plastic edge and um, the, the function of this little container has um, come and gone so it's time to let those worms back uh, out into a larger bin so they're just going to get put in here as well. Let's get up on the bench and get to work. I laid out all my finishing tubs here and we're going to just pluck all the worms out of each of these bait boxes. I wasn't going to go too crazy reloading the bait boxes. I've got a, a banana peel that I'm going to put in there but I'm assuming that since it's only been about four days since I added watermelon to each of these that there's probably still a big chunk of watermelon remaining that we can continue to use so let's um let's actually pull each of these out one at a time to see how they're coming along Got a little tray here that we can use to put the material into I can't remember which bin had the larger number of worms in it, but this one seems like it's got a pretty healthy number. I don't see the hunk of watermelon. If that was the case, I could certainly see that piece of watermelon getting eaten. There are all different size worms in here, some more mature ones, but also some very, very small baby worms in here as well. So. Let me see if I can also, at the same time, try to get some of the worms that are actually stuck to the uh, inside of the bait box out of here as well. There are a few in here. You can see that a couple of them. I was able to snag them with my fingertips. So we can see a couple more down in there. So we're just going to include them here as well. So I don't see much salvageable material in here. I see some sprouts, you know, I don't know if we want to just hang on to those as well. Um, there's just one or two remaining in there, but I'm not going to sweat it. Like I said, I'm going to reload these bait boxes and put them back in there and this, these bins are going to get one final um, opportunity to get depopulated using these bait boxes. So let's, let's see if we can retrieve worms from Bait box number two. Let's see what we can get out of here. Uh, yeah, see? Still a little bit of that watermelon left in here. Here's a big guy. We're going to try to fetch him too. I don't see any more. So this box just doesn't seem to be burning through that hunk of watermelon as quickly as the other one was there is just a little piece of it remaining here so I'm gonna hang on to that as well and we'll reload that into one of the bait boxes as well um, if you look within the middle of the hunk of leaves and stuff there are some worms congregating in here as well so we've got a few coming together not bad all right let's see how we're doing with bait box number three Let's 
Let's see how the bait box is progressing. Yeah, pretty good. Looks like you've convinced a bunch of worms to exit the material and come on over so we can move them over into a, a newer bin. Let's see how they're doing inside here. Here too, it looks like they've made their way through the, um, the piece of watermelon that had been placed in there for them. All right, so this stuff right here, it's just gonna get put into my newest bin right down there. So we'll, uh, we'll take care of that in a minute. Just wanted to get these bait boxes back into service now that, uh, now that we've retrieved the baited worms from them. For that, I've, um, I've got a piece of banana peel that I'm gonna use, and I got some fresh leaves from outside. And we'll also make sure we provide a, a decent amount of grit. So I'm going to go ahead and rebuild these boxes really quick, but I'm not going to film all that because it's not too exciting. And I think I did it recently um, in, a, in a video that's online already. So let's take care of that off camera and we'll return in just a minute. So here they are. They've all been reloaded. You can maybe be able to see here I kind of rolled up the uh, banana peel. And... Um, surrounded it with crushed leaves. So we're just going to fold up each of these boxes now and reposition it down within the compost tub. And now this is going to be the home stretch for this. I'm only going to allow maybe another week for this, maybe not even, to see if uh, we can just bait out a few last worms out of each of these tubs and then this material is going to be destined for the garden outside. So, so I'm going to put these bins back up on the shelf. And uh, what we'll do is we'll grab that newest bin that I've got. And we'll release the, the worms that we baited out. And we'll set them free into the newest of my bins. And into that same bin, into that newest bin of mine, we'll also release those those other worms that are in that little plastic jar that we saw earlier. We've got the bait boxes or the uh, the finishing tubs with the bait boxes in them back up on the shelf and covered up and everything else like that and what we have here now is the newest of my bins which is only a few weeks old at this point. It's had a couple feedings. And the one thing you might, not might have noticed which is a little different from what was discussed in the last video of mine if you were watching or keeping track I was, um, I was noting how I was liking the higher moisture levels in all of my bins ever since I was keeping them all covered with multiple layers of cardboard. But I've also been noticing when I come down into the wormery there's this real damp smell going on. And the other thing that I noticed when I had set up the time lapse within this bin was that besides red wigglers it seemed like there were also a lot of potworms going on here. And potworms I believe are a sign of excess moisture and I think it could also mean um, a high level of acidity in the bins. So I figured I would just take it one step at a time and try to um, at least backpedal to the point where maybe I'm not maintaining my bins as moist as I've been recently and going back to a slightly drier maintenance model. And then I'm hoping that that would result in um, maybe fewer pot worms. Just wanted to explain that in case anyone noticed a little difference from what was discussed previously. As long as we're here we might as well take a peek at how things are progressing since the last feeding which was um, just four days ago. It wasn't very long ago at all so we're probably going to see some signs of the most recently added food items. Cantaloupe some of the uh, skin here with just a little bit of the fleshy material on the cantaloupe remaining. A number of different things going on here. Here's a piece of watermelon where you could also see a certain amount of the, uh, the red fleshy part of it still on here. And it does look like these worms are having a field day down here in the feeding zone. Which is pretty much what we're looking for, right? Good stuff. So we're just going to uh, Push up some of this material off to the side and make a little bit of room. Yeah, 
we're going to go ahead and just drop everything right in. First, I'm going to empty this time lapse container. I have here just a piece of rope, which I'm hoping is compostable. It's a paper, another piece of paper. And, well, the beer can is not going to get composted. We're just going to pull that out of here. That was just in there for a spacer, just to try to, you know, limit the amount of room that the worms have to burrow and hide. And I wanted them up against the glass as much as possible, so that was the purpose of that. Then we're just going to go ahead and empty out what's in here. Also going to try to see if I can spot these pot worms. They were very visible in the time lapse. But you know what I'll do is I'll that little short um, test time lapse that I created using this container here. I'll um, I'll go ahead and I'll uh, I'll place a, a link to that video up in the corner so you can check it out. And then um, I'd be curious to see what people think. I, I sort of made the observation after the fact thinking that what I was seeing are pot worms, but I could be wrong, so I'd love to hear people's opinion on what they're, what they're seeing there if they take the time to check out that video. And please place a comment either in that video or in this video of what you think. And um, as long as we're on the subject, if you're going to be commenting on pot worms and if you know anything about them, please also let me know if it's anything I should bother with or worry about. Or should I just leave them be and accept them as just a helper in my composting bins? I'd like to hear people's feedback on that topic as well, since I'm kind of new to the, the issue, if it's even something I should consider an issue. Last but not least, we're going to release these little guys here. So let's just go ahead and empty the whole tray in one felt swoop if we can. Okay, looks like we got them for the most part. Just going to break the lump apart a little bit just so we can get a sense of how many worms we succeeded in baiting out of the finishing tubs. I think we have like three separate zones, right? Because we did sort of just push things to the side and this looks like that busier of the three bins that we baited the most number of worms out of. It looks like we were able to retrieve quite a number of worms. And it does seem like a, a number of the worms in this collection are also rather small in size. So I'd like to also think that we were successful in luring out newly hatched worms. Worms that kind of made their way into the finishing tub by way of still being in their cocoons prior to hatching. And were lured into the bait boxes by the, uh, the savory food and the moisture and the grit that was there for them. I'm just going to cover up here a little bit, and, and that's pretty much all we were after today. Not much more to be done here other than cleaning up and putting things away. So with that, I'm going to bid everyone farewell. Have a great day. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then by all means, give the video a thumbs up. I always appreciate that. And also consider subscribing to the channel and becoming a, uh, a regular viewer. All right, everyone. That's it for today. Have a have a nice day. Thanks for watching. Bye.